What's up guys, Naeem here. Welcome back to the channel, Bass Brothers Fishing DMV. Continuing on this quest to build out this Alumacraft 1232. Super excited about bringing this video to you. It's all about framing out the rear deck to fit one of Nate's aluminum hatches. Speaking of Nate, shout out to TB Nation and also Nate's Custom Boats for sponsoring the giveaway. If you don't know about the giveaway, I'm giving away a $50 gift card to TB Nation's website. That's tbnation.net. I'll be announcing the winner on the next video. To enter the win, make sure you subscribe to the channel, leave a like on this video right here, that's the giveaway video, and leave a comment. And this can be any comment about your boat, a boat build you're doing, or a boat build you plan on doing. That's what you gotta do to enter the win. Again, winner will be announced on the next video. You'll even get a sneak peek into some of the mods that I've already done to the boat in this video because I filmed it at two different times of the build. So I hope you guys pick up on that as you watch this video. And don't worry, I have full detailed videos as always going through step-by-step -step what I did in this boat. After this, we're gonna run right into electrical, everything from installing the electric motor by Elko, all the way through hatch lights, deck lights, bilge pump, nav lights, the whole works. It's coming your way, guys. Thanks for joining this journey. I'll see you after the video. I don't know what it is about framing out the rear casting deck that I like so much. It went really well on my boat. I did it all in one day. This one will be a little more simplified. One, I don't have as much space to frame out on this boat. And two, the hatch lid that will go in here will be from Nate Custom Boats. And we're going with a three track lid. The lid will be supported by three sides. It'll be that side along the bench, a track that comes out here, and a track that comes out here. And there'll be a space here, which is excellent. This is the first time I'll have a rear hatch like this that will be spaced here that you can easily open. But the way this will be designed, the hatch will almost be the entire length of the middle of the transom area right here. The opening for the lid will be 28.5 inches wide. I found center of the bench, which is this mark right here, and marked my edges for the lid on both sides of the mark. But before I frame out the hatch, I'm gonna go ahead and lay tracks for the deck support. And I'm gonna do that first because if I lay my track out right here, it's gonna limit my access to be able to install the tracks along the side of the boat. So you just gotta think ahead on what obstacles may come your way and solve for them ahead of time. So right here, I'm just marking every two inches and this will allow me to flex the angled bracket to the contour of the boat. Slotting this out will also allow me to bend this down. Because of course, this, the side of a boat is not a 90 degree angle. I don't think I've ever seen a John boat with a 90 degree sidewall. I will need to be able to get it on there and then bend that down so that it creates a level horizontal surface for the deck to rest on top of it. And this is where the bandsaw comes in really handy. This does this really quick. I don't have to, and I can do it with one hand. This is the mini bandsaw by Milwaukee. I don't have to like clamp it down and keep moving it and cutting and moving and cutting. I can just go boom, 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 and make all the cuts one time. All right, got our hole drilled out. Similar to the rest of the boat, I'm using 3 16 inch closed aluminum pot rivets. These are not open. That water could leak through the rivet. Also, I'm not concerned about water because this is well above the water line. All right, that side's done. Over to this side, and then we can cut our tracks. All right, we've got our side tracks on, and we've got our main brackets on the bench seat, both sides. I'm gonna install identical brackets on the transom as well, both on this side and this side. So I already know my tracks need to be 17 inches long, so I'm gonna make those cuts, get those prepped up. So this is what I'm doing right here. So I used this square right here and got my 90 degree angle and I marked where I would need to install this bracket in order for my track to be at a 90 degree angle. So I'm using this leveler right here just to make sure that I am at the right height on this side of the boat on the transom. I'm just gonna mark this. Also make sure that this is level also. All right, that's completely level right there. So I'm gonna drill four pilot holes in here and then I'll check all my measurements one more time before I drill into the actual transom. So 
this is something that I, technique I did for my boat when I created the rear hinges. Just take the cutters, and again with 3 16 inch aluminum, it's very easy to just snip it. So, just doing some, a little at a time, till I get the right amount cut off for what I need. I think we got the exact angle we need to fit in there flush. Just like that. So guys, I do apologize if my audio is not the greatest for this video. I actually broke my external mic. Again, apologies for the sound. If it's not sounding as up to par as it usually does. All right, I got it all lined up. Go ahead and drill this out. And I'm gonna do this the same way I did the front where I put these two brackets together and I'm gonna drill through both and make this one solid unit right here. The rivet will go through this angle, the two small brackets here, and the other piece of angle aluminum on the other side. And the ones that I'm using, got these off of Amazon, of course. These are very long rivets. I think this is a 5 8 inch grip. I am very pleased with this. It's very sturdy, very strong. All right, it's the next day. I got my head cam on. We're rolling old school with the head cam today. Trying to give you guys different vantage points. Got the other GoPro right there. A lot goes into filming this. And it's one thing to just come out here and knock it out, but to stop and film and make commentary, it, it's a lot of work, but it's all worth it for you guys. And the feedback has been all positive. These videos are really helping folks out. So that's, that's all that matters right there. So where we left off was, well, you guys didn't leave off anywhere because you're watching one video. Oh, by the way, I did get my external mic back, so you guys are probably hearing me a lot more clear. I'm very happy about that. Got it back from the repair shop today. So we are up and running, guys. We are up and doing our thing. One thing I did want to point out, and hopefully you guys can see this. I don't know if you saw this in the video as I was doing it. I left a 16th of an inch or maybe a little bit more space between where I measured and where I put the bracket. And I did that because when I install the track going across, it's going to stick out 1 16th of an inch, which is the thickness of this aluminum. So you always have to consider the actual aluminum and the thickness of it when doing your framing and doing all your measurement. So just another tip, I can't tell you how often you can frame everything up and it be tight because you're off an eighth of an inch or so. That's level, completely level. Just gonna mark this for good measure. Once you know what you need to do, a lot of it is just repeat, 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 repeat. And part of the challenge is just staying consistent, being accurate, staying focused, and try to limit your mistakes. If you find yourself getting tired and all of that, stop, take a break, even like pick up the next day before you make a mistake that you're gonna regret. If you guys can see, I've got my horizontal line right here. That's where the top of this bracket goes based on me using this and leveling it to where I need to draw my line. Now, when I'm looking at it, I need to make sure from left to right, where do I put this so that it's a 90 degree angle? And that's where you saw me use this, wedge it up against the bench and the piece that I'm going to mount, the track that I'm gonna lay down right here. And then I drew a line straight down right there. So I'm just gonna use my two marks and I know what I need to do here. Put this right over that line. So I'm gonna first mark my top hole and drill this out and put a rivet in it before I put my other holes in the transom and mount this thing final I'll make sure that I have it level here putting this up to the bracket yeah I'm doing a complete step-by-step -step with you guys hopefully you guys can appreciate that leave a like and subscribe fellers let's take our time let's not move this bracket I'm gonna drill slow just so that I can control any pivots that may try to happen I am gonna get this piece finalized. And I will need to trim away some of this because right now it's too long because of the angle of the transom. This is a 90 degree angle, this is not. So just gonna start trimming at it till we get this thing nice and perfect. Gotta love 1 16th inch aluminum. You can just cut it by hand if you need to. All right, we got this thing pegged. All right. So we got that level. I'm gonna take it out. This bracket has found a new home. 
Let's get the other bracket on here because if I install this on here right now, it's gonna make it that much harder for me to reach back here with my drill. So just thinking ahead again, don't frame yourself up in a corner and make life really harder for yourself later. Now that we know exactly the length we need here and the taper that we need to do on this end, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the second piece. This piece will go here. The other piece will go right next to it. Again, this is to support the hash lid. The one right here will support the decking. I need to shave off this lip right here for the angle brackets that are sticking up, protruding through the tracks. I need to shave that off and make it flush. I'll go ahead and do that as the last step. Just use an angle grinder and get that done. All right, got it all sanded down with the angle grinder. Next time, I'll actually cut it before installing it. So I'd have to measure it and cut off the excess aluminum that's sticking out. Grinding it worked, but just not the ideal situation, not the ideal way to go. So note to self, do your pre-cuts before mounting it on here. Get all your measurements together, cut off the excess with an actual blade and it'll go a lot smoother. But I got it done, we're good to go. So now that we've got all the rear framing done, it's time to finally mount this bad boy right here. So the way Nate made this is he left a little extra length on the tracks for the lid. And that's for me to be able to cut it to the exact measurement of the transom and account for the angle of the transom at the same time. So that's what I'm about to do now. I've got an idea how I wanna do it and it all has to do with this little piece of aluminum right here. As you can see, this piece of aluminum is cut at an angle. And I got this angle from when I actually made this piece right here. And I didn't show this on the channel, but I decided in the end to add a piece of aluminum right here to support the panel that will go right here. And I didn't, I didn't want there to be flex in the side panel, so I added this. So to be able to cut the right angle so that this is flush right here, because that's at an angle as well, I held up this piece of aluminum to this piece and then drew a line on the back side, and there goes my angle. And when I cut it out for this, it worked out perfectly, as you can see. It's completely lined up with that. Something told me, let me just hold it up to there. So I took this piece, held it up to the back transom, and it actually fits the exact angle. So I just made a little copy of it onto this little piece right here. So pretend that this is the track of the hatch. It needs to be cut at an angle to lay flush against the transom like that, all right? So you see how this is flush? That's what I want here. So what I did was I already measured from here to here is 17 and a half inches. So I know the full length of the track from the bench to the transom is 17 and a half inches. And then I measured the track just right here and I stopped right here where the inside part of the lid is. That measures 18 inches. So I'm gonna start by taking off half an inch here. But again, I need to account for the angle that this will be. So I'll mark my half inch mark, wherever that is, somewhere around right here. I will hold this up and draw my line of the actual cut. I'm gonna draw the line that coincides with this right here, on here, okay? I'm gonna do that on both sides and then make my cut. All right, that's the plan. Again, I've never done this before. First time, this is just out of my mind and I might be out of my mind when I see how this works out, but I wanna give it a try. Of course, I'll think it through a couple more times before I actually make the cut. Measure twice, cut once, that's the rule. So yeah, let's get to work. I just drew my angle that I need it cut at and I drew my straight line here and straight there. So first I will cut this straight line and also cut this piece off and then cut that angle. All right, so got the last cut to make. Nice. All right, it's not the prettiest job in the world, but we're gonna work with it. All right, I got both sides cut and there's the angle right there. I don't know if you guys can even get the perspective of the angle. I doubt it's gonna be a perfect fit the first go around, but let's see. All right. Wow, almost, almost. All right, looks like I need to take off, believe it or not, about a quarter of an inch. Let's give it another try. Thinking this should be it. I had to shift the battery back some just to move these cables out the way. Have to solve for that. 
probably need to install the hatch completely. Go ahead and rivet it in and then shove the battery back as far as it can go. But now I can see that easily the hatch fits very flush. Took about three iterations, but was able to get it in there the way it needed to be. Here's the right side. All right, so we framed out this deck. Again, this deck was framed out for a three track hatch. One, two, three tracks right there. And it made life easier on the framing too, because all I needed to do for this boat was put down a track on each side because the hatch will be riveted into the bench as the third side, okay? So there you have it guys, all done. Next step will be to rivet the hatch in, but I won't do that in this video. That's gonna be done later, either in a hatch video or in the decking video. Not too sure yet, but stay tuned for that. All right, so there you have it. Mission complete, feeling really good. These lids are awesome. Again, hit up Nate. All his information is down below in the description. Check out TB Nation. I'm telling you, TB Nation's site is off the hook. You gotta check it out. They have tons of, of products and information there to help you get through your build. So stay tuned to the channel. Don't forget, hit that subscribe button. Leave a like if you got something cool out of this video. Shout out to everyone out there who supported this channel and has sent me messages, showed me pictures about their build. It's really cool to see some of the builds that's out there. I appreciate each and every one of you. As always, stay safe out there. We'll see you on the next video.